Hello, I'm Paul and um, this is my study. This is where I read and and write and sit with my cat, Bernard Socks, every day and get on with the stuff that we, <laughs> there he is, that we get on with. Say hello, Socks. What? Oh, anyway, I thought I'd um, do some videos and talk about what I've been reading and writing lately. What do you think of that, Socks? What? Will you help? No. Okay, now I'm squashed beneath the cat because he sits on my lap all day long. Um, anyway, the first thing I have to talk about is this collection of um, science fiction and fantasy stories, Other Edens, from 1987 edited by Christopher Evans and Robert Holstock. Now, I read this first when it came out when um, I was about 17. So it's a long time later, and I think I've dipped into it again and again over the years. For me, it was one of those turning points in, um, in reading science fiction and, and moving away from science fiction books that were meant for kids, um, some of which had been brilliant. I remember things like um, the Peter Davison book of alien planets and and also of monsters and they were books that were designed to get Doctor Who geeks like me away from Doctor Who books reading just Terence Dix and Malcolm Hulk into reading more mainstream although I hesitate to say it's science fiction like by people like Philip K. Dick um, and um, and they were wonderful collections but I remember this coming out and it's it's very much a, a collection for adults um, because some of the stories are slightly racy, actually, looking back. Um, they're all mind-blowing, and, and I remember that from the time, especially um, this, one of the stories by, by Gary Kilworth, which I've talked about again and again all, over the years, um, about an old woman and her, and her pets, a very macabre story, which I, I won't spoil now. But dipping into all of these again, I've almost finished it, um, there are wonderful pieces by um, Tanith Lee, for example, or Brian Aldiss. Um, and to me, it's just amazing to look at things like Amazon and see that there's one review in all these years and it's tepid and grudging and disappointing as a review because, um, I don't know, maybe it wasn't just, maybe it was just me this was kind of formative for. I don't know. Anyway, this has been a lovely thing to, to revisit in... Um, in February, alongside um, everything else that I was reading. I had a very disappointing book club book. I've got a lovely group that's been going two years exactly now. Um, we read um, The Travelling Cat Chronicles uh, by um, Hiro Ari Arikawa, which I found very disappointing, but I've got very strong feelings about cat books. And um, that one let me down. Um, February also consisted of beginning a revisit. There's lots of revisits going on. Uh, uh, to Little House on the Prairie. And I read the first book again, um, Little House in the Big Woods, in a really lovely new edition. Um, it came as a box set that I also bought for my mum at Christmas. I bought my own copy too because... They're nice, they're big, the print's large, they, um, the drawings are larger and less pokey and dingy than they are in my old um, Puffin collections, which I've, I've still got. Um, and it's a lovely series. I bought it for my mum because when I was a kid, we used to watch the TV show Little House on the Prairie every Thursday night with a Freya Bentos steak pie and peas, and mash, and gravy. And it was a ritual um, in the late 70s. And it was years before I I read the books. Maybe I was a, in my 20s before I read the books. And um, they're quite different. And of course, they're their own thing. And it's lovely to go back to them now. And I've dipped into all sorts of other things um, this February. Um... I'm just looking now at my pile of things. I'll show you. Oh, Born Into Light by Paul Samuel Jacobs, which is a, um, a book that I picked up in Scrivener's Bookshop 
in um, Buxton a little while ago. Uh, it's a fantastic five-floored bookshop and they've always had a wonderful kids section and this is a middle grade science fiction novel um, from the 80s, something I would never have come across I don't think without there being a fantastic bookshop like that. This is like one of those books just washed up on the shore that um, uh, you would never see anywhere else. And it's a, um, a kind of um, body snatchers, alien invasion, children of the damned kind of story, a bit John Wyndham, but set in the States with touches of Bradbury perhaps, but very chilling and peculiar. Um, about, about these children who turn out to be um, changelings. They turn out to be aliens left on Earth. And it becomes a kind of rapture story by the end, but I won't spoil it in case you ever come across it. But again, a book that has barely any digital trace. You look at reviews, there's hardly anything there. Goodreads, it's been passed by. The fella, uh, uh, Paul Samuel Jacobs, did two science fiction novels. And again, the the, um, the the kind of skimpy reviews say slighting things like it's you know sub something else, or it's sub um, uh, you know a kind of secondary novel, um, and I I just found it stunningly written and full of dread and full of um, evocative descriptions and vivid characters. And so I was grateful. I was glad to um, to have found it. And it's, uh, I guess, something I've come across because I, I buy too many secondhand books, and take that that risk. It's not much of a risk when they cost you know a, a pound or one pound fifty each. But I'm still buying yards of these forgotten books, and it makes me happy to um, to find out that they're they're actually good. Um, Similarly, with a scholastic book from the 80s in, States, in the States, an Apple scholastic book called, um, ooh, what do you call it? Cassie Bowen Takes Witch Lessons. Um, somebody with a very long name whose surname is Himes. Anyway, I can't see the front just now. And again, a lovely middle grade book. I don't know what it is about middle grade fiction. Um, I suppose they're the books that I wished I could have found at that age, and I feel as if I'd missed out on them. But there's something about the clarity of the writing in books, especially American books for that age, that I really enjoy. Um, oh, and it's good to get away from the cluttered nonsense of adult fiction um, when you spend too much time in dreadful people's heads thinking terrible thoughts and the awful adult preoccupations. Um, in something like uh, Cassie Bowen's Taking Witch Lessons, it's about friendships and about loyalty and the very fierce and um, straightforward in some ways um, battles that you get into as a as a kid and also the business of you know somebody's grandma's a witch it seems because she she isn't the same as everybody else's grandma and those kind of stories seeing inside the stranger's house and and, and realizing how other people live was the was the kind of raw material of, of growing up I suppose seeing other people seeing um, how other lives work and also it's the raw stuff of fiction for me because that's that's what you're doing when you read you're being led into somebody else's home I think anyway that's um, that's most of February I've dipped into other things I guess um, oh especially this oh, picture books from yesterday and our trip to uh, the to, to New Mills, that Finding Winnie, which is a picture book by um, Lindsay Matic and Sophie Blackhall, which is beautiful. It's really lovely. I'll talk about this at some other point, I think. And another older one, Monster Poems. Um, John Foster and Corky Paul, which is a fantastically funny and silly anthology with wonderful pictures um, that I, I was pouring over at like one o'clock in the morning, sat up in bed. Um, I can't ask for anything more from a book 
but the print is large enough and the text is good enough to keep me awake. I'm an insomniac anyway, <laughs> but I like to have something nice to read late at night or any other time of day. Anyway, I'll stop burbling and um, I suppose I'll um, see you soon. Oh, anyway, um, that's, that's the end of the first the first video I've made like this talking about books. Um, socks wasn't much help, were you? He's a bit tired. Saturday morning. Anyway, I'm sorry for the shonky quality and um, I hope I'll do better again next time. But I hope I've mentioned some stuff you um, be interested in. Hopefully. Anyway, bye.